Hello, have you ever heard of a soul bound token? This is an idea that Vitalik Buterin coined earlier in 2020, sorry, 2022, and relates to digital identity and sort of ways that people can uh, kind of verify what they've done, where they work, degrees they have, et cetera, in a more decentralized internet. Hey, Molly Elmore here. Welcome to the show. Today, we're going to talk about soul bound tokens. Uh, this is an idea that came up in the news this week because a Japanese bank uh, announced their plans to utilize this technology to verify the identity of their customers, among other things. Uh, it was a term that was coined by Vitalik Buterin in early 2022, actually back in May, I guess. And Binance is also using this technology as well. So I think that as we sort of evolve the version of the internet that we're using now and kind of move towards a more decentralized set of tools, verifying who you are and that you have certain qualities is going to become increasingly important. So I thought today I would break down what is a soul bound token. When it comes to digital assets and tokens, which are kind of a representation of a digital asset, we have quite a few different types. So the most common type is what we call fungible money. So if I buy an XRP or a Bitcoin, it doesn't really matter like which one I get. In the same way, it doesn't really matter if you're going to give me a $20 bill and you have a bunch of 20s in your wallet. They're all the same. There's no difference in fungible assets. However, NFTs, which I still think is the worst marketing name in one of the history of marketing names, uh, essentially means that it's not fungible, meaning uniqueness matters. If you were to go and buy a very overpriced Bored Ape Yacht Club NFT, that is unique. Each one is different, and it would essentially entitle you, I guess, to be a member of their Discord community or whatever perks you get for owning a Bored Ape Yacht Club. Uh, and most of the NFT like hype in 2021 was really driven around this uh, speculative investment market where you could like buy an NFT inexpensively and flip it for more money. I kind of got caught up in that too. It was a little bit fun, but that market kind of blew up like a bubble and seems to have popped for the time being. However, the NFT technology is quite innovative and has a lot of applications and uses outside of like these hypey profile picture type projects. And one use case is the idea that you could have an NFT that represents your identity. And while that it's got to, going to sound scary and dystopian at first. It's not really that, that big of a deal unless it gets misused. So the idea is if you were to go to a website right now and you log in, you're kind of usually giving a username and a password. If that website got hacked, which has happened many times in the history of the internet, then your login credentials could be stolen. So the sort of next version of security, and which is kind of tied to this ID, idea that some of us refer to as Web3, you would go to a website and you would connect with your wallet. So then that website doesn't have any personal information about you. So if you hack the website, you can't get any of my information. However, this wallet ID, so let's say I have a MetaMask wallet or whatever. MetaMask doesn't really know anything about me. They give me like a password, a sense of, of seed phrases, that I can use to access that wallet and reestablish my account. But if I wanted to connect my wallet to like, a, let's say it's something in my, my community, they don't know if I live in this community or not. Like there's nothing unique and personally identifiable about that. And there are many situations where you would want people to only be able to log in if they have a particular set of criteria. So for example, let's say you had a community group and only people who live in your zip code are invited to join, like not exactly an earth shattering idea. Well, right now in the centralized web world, generally someone or some sort of computer program would have to figure out, oh yes, Molly lives in zip code one, two, three, four, five. She's allowed in. Well, if you wanted to do that in a more automated way in web three decentralized environment, you could use these soul down tokens. It's kind of a, 
<laughs> these web crypto people come up with these silly names for things. It sounds a little bit like woo woo that like my soul is tied to <laughs> these identities, uh, which when I first heard about the concept, I was like, really, this is what you picked for the label? Uh, your soul in this context is an identity that you have. And one of the neat things that I like about this concept is that you can have multiple identities. So let's say you have a LinkedIn profile and you go to LinkedIn and you fill in your resume and you say, I, I had these jobs in the past. I went to these schools, et cetera. None of that's verified, right? Like LinkedIn isn't calling up where I went to college to see if I actually graduated. So if I went to go apply for a job and I you know, use my LinkedIn profile as my resume and they want to make sure that I'm telling the truth, somebody generally has to call up that school and verify that stuff. I mean, that's kind of a common thing if you've ever hired people that you're supposed to run credit reference check, right? To make sure that they in fact worked where they said they worked and et cetera. So let's say hypothetically, we wanted to get rid of that friction. You wanted to get rid of that busy work. What if I, you created a system where in my soul, my web soul, I got some kind of confirmation, something from my school that says, yes, in fact, Molly graduated. And that is now stored in like a digital wallet. So if I were to go get a job and they wanted to verify that stuff, there's now kind of a set of credentials that exist that you can't fake. So it's a kind of a neat idea to verify things. There's also a situation. So if you've read any of my kind of videos about the world of finance moving to the blockchain, there is a very novel uh, pilot project that was done out of Singapore called Project Guardian. And it was to test using DeFi software, which is kind of like an automated exchange that no person or no company sort of manages and runs 24-7 using DeFi software to trade bonds within the institutional market. So the idea is that you have to be an institutional bond trader, which by the way, I am not, uh, to participate in this marketplace. So they have to have a way to verify, well, who is an institutional bond trader? And you could give everybody a login, but that's not how these DeFi things work. You generally have to go and connect via a wallet. Well, how is the wallet going to know if I'm an institutional bond trader? you could use this idea of a soul bound token. So the idea here is that it's an NFT, meaning it's unique. And unlike a board ape, it is non transferable. So when I create a soul bound token that has my identity in it, my name, my qualifications, whatever, I can't turn around and sell that there's going to be no liquid market for these soul bound tokens. You could also use them to access like a private equity site, or let's say, you know, we end up in a situation in the US where only accredited investors are able to access some exchanges. How would a DeFi site know that? Well, if you have a soul bound token that you get some kind of credential from somewhere that says you are an accredited investor, you would be able to access some of these exchanges because you have that. It's kind of like an access card permission slip couple labels that you could put on it, but there are so many applications for this idea. If you wanted to have this kind of wild west open source type environment, but you need to keep track or control who's allowed to access what. And not all of this is nefarious at all. I mean, you might, um, you know, have a work at a company and they want to give you access to, you know, an intranet. And instead of having you log in, you kind of log in with your, with like, instead of logging in with the username and password, you would log in with your wallet, but it has to have an NFT that verifies that you actually work there. Uh, so, so I think this is actually pretty cool tech. Uh, I knew about this idea that there were NFTs that would be used to verify identity. I did not know until recently that there was this label called soul bound tokens. I don't know if this label will stick forever. Vital Vitalik came up with this earlier this year, but Binance is also launching something. They're calling it something else. They're calling it the Binance Account Board BAB. So this label of soulbound tokens may go away, but I think that it's pretty novel in that it would allow you to create kind of an online identity profile that would be used to access certain things. 
there are some concerns that I have. Uh, well, sorry, before I get into that, one of the things I do like about this idea is that you could have multiple identities. So that I'm less concerned that me only being allowed to have one identity. What happens if there's a problem with that one identity? I'm locked out of everything. That's a problem. So you could have multiple. And they said that you could have multiple for different like areas of your life. You could have a work soul. <laughs> so all of your professional experience, your school stuff, whatever that would go like in your resume one, essentially, and you would use that to do any kind of work things. But let's say you're also an avid gamer, you could have a gaming one. So all of the you know, trophies you won in some video game, you could store in this wallet as well. You could also potentially have one for volunteer work or social stuff you do. Maybe you're active in like some kind of sports thing. Like there's a whole bunch of sectors in the world that people participate in and it would serve them to have um, a credential access. And the fact that you can create multiple is good because then you're not depending on this one for everything. Because this is where I do have some dystopian concerns, which again, anytime you have new tech, there's like awesome ways it can be used and there are scary ways that it can be used. My personal goal is to just be aware of all of them. So I, so including the dark ones, so if something were to come along, like my cognitive dissonance will identify it. So I'm gonna list all of these sort of things that could go wrong with this so that when you're hearing out in the marketplace or reading articles or whatever, you now would be programmed in your subconscious to identify and notice those things. So for example, these identities could potentially have your religious group that you belong to, a church or synagogue or whatever type of religious organization you might be a member of. It could also have your political affiliations. It could also have some sort of other ethnicity that you have that in parts of the world, those things can be held against you and used for uh, political reasons. So one idea I think that's important and hopefully this will happen is that you would have the ability to hide some of those qualities in certain situations if you wanted to. So let's say, for example, you're a member of a particular religious group and you don't want that to be common knowledge if you live in a place where that religious group is persecuted. So we want to make sure that when these rules are programmed, that they don't set people up to sort of suffer under these conditions. Um, we also kind of see in, in a very hyper politicized world that we're in now, you know, if you so support a particular political candidate or a particular ideology, then that can be sort of used to label you in a certain way. And we want to make sure that this technology, which it, it's, it's tech, it, it's not good or bad. It just is, but it could be used for nefarious purposes. So as we are adopting these new things, let's all pay attention to make sure that, um, they're not being misused and abused. This does relate into the idea of digital identity, which is something I do follow closely and I'm interested in. Uh, I've done videos about central bank digital currencies and the social credit score system, which I don't actually think exists anywhere in the world. Uh, I for a long time thought it existed in China until I recently learned that it does not. I did a separate video on that if you're curious about that particular topic. I'll put that in the description. However, if you hypothetically wanted to build a dystopian, scary social credit system, you would need some kind of tech like this because you would have to be able to, one, match people up across different databases. And that's what the digital identity is. I mean, if you live in the United States, which I do, we have a social security number that functions as your digital ID, or it could, I don't know if it will but I don't have to log into social media platforms with my social security number. So it'd be very difficult, not impossible, but difficult at scale to connect my bank account to my Facebook account. I have actually several bank accounts. Some are under my social security, some are under my EIN number for my business. And then I have many social media accounts across a variety of platforms. If you wanted to connect all that stuff, like technically that is not simple because there is no one unique identifier that connects me across all of those places. However, if there were a digital ID, which has been pushed in the last couple of years for, for our safety, of course, if that were implemented and you had to use that same ID number to log in across all of these platforms, 
then I'm, I'm going to be concerned because you could easily do a match that, you know, my social media behavior could essentially affect my bank account, et cetera. I don't think anybody's doing that right now. It's really hard. <laughs> now, don't be, it's not possible, but don't underestimate how much governments can screw up technology. They're, I mean, even Facebook, which is arguably one of the most advanced technology companies in terms of how much data they are managing and flagging and indexing on a daily basis. And they are scoring all of us who use that platform. And I'm not, I'm sure other platforms do as well, but we'll just use Facebook as an example. They're not connecting to other databases like bank accounts or other social media platforms or some kind of health database. Like that's not all being matched. That's a big deal. But this soul bound token idea, I'm bringing it up because it is sort of related to that idea. If a system were to be built that was sort of a control mechanism, uh, there would need to be a way to turn on and off your access to things. And that could be done through just a software app, or it could be done via these soul bound tokens where you, your identity gets kind of flagged in some way. Um, I don't want to assume that's going to happen. I actually think that it's so difficult to implement this matching in the databases, even if you have this digital ID and this tech that I'm really not worried about it happening for years. I might be wrong. Uh, I just have not seen the government successfully execute a massive technology project ever. Now that doesn't mean the military couldn't or some other organization couldn't, but uh, this is where we go back to incentives and understanding who would really benefit from that situation. So uh, I think this is cool idea, this soul bound token, it would enable us to move to a more decentralized internet, which is pretty cool, but it also would allow systems to exist that require trust and validation. So again, my company has a little website, maybe my book club, we have a website or some kind of community. And I only want people who are in the book club to be able to access to it. I mean, Discord has like this feature where if you have a particular NFT, it will let you into a certain Discord channel. So like this is sort of being used. I don't know if it would qualify as a soul bound token because you can't buy or sell it. And it lives on the blockchain. I'm not exactly sure how many blockchains support it. Obviously, uh, Ethereum will if Vitalik Buterin announced it and the BNB blockchain if Binance is using it. But um, I I'm, I'm under the impression that if a blockchain can support NFTs, they probably can support this kind of thing as well. Uh, so I wanted to just introduce it to all of you so you could sort of see how Web3 is evolving, that this is sort of a neat idea. Again, they picked weird, goofy names, which a lot of the crypto marketing uh, has silly names. Uh, I don't, they're going to refer to these wallets where you store these NFTs as souls, which I think is an interesting choice from the, as a copywriter. Anyway, um, if you like this video, please like it helps me with YouTube, subscribe to the channel for more, and I will see you in the next video.